Hey everybody, Michael here from OSM Photography and today I want to discuss a question that's plagued humanity for eons. Which printer should I buy? The Canon Pro 300 or the Pro 1000? Let's have a chat. So the first thing to bear in mind is the only person who can answer the question of which printer should you buy is you, okay? I will do my best to go over some of the strengths and differences between each printer and I'll give you the benefit of the experience I've had printing with both those printers at various times over the years but at the end of the day it will all come down to what best fits your workflow and your use case scenario okay I'll do my best to give you the benefit of the experience I've had printing with both printers uh, numerous times over the years um, I'll try and highlight some of the strengths that each printer has over the other and um, some of the major differences that might be relevant in real world use case scenarios but we're not going to go over an exhaustive specs list okay we might mention a few specs that are relevant to what we're discussing when it comes to use case scenarios but that's pretty much it but at the end of the day it will all come down to what best fits your workflow and your use case scenario okay so let's start with the physical differences between the printers okay first off the first thing you'll notice is that the Pro 300 is more compact than the Pro 1000. When it was initially launched, it was the first thing I noticed was that it was more compact even than its predecessor, the Pro 10S, but it is also more compact than the Pro 1000. It is two to three inches in every direction smaller than the Pro 1000, okay? So that means, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it means if you're tight for real estate on your desk, very limited space on your desk or on a shelf or wherever you put your printer, that might be a factor. If space is not a factor, then it's not that big a deal, okay? But more importantly than the size, what's even more obvious is the weight difference between the two printers, okay? The Pro 300 clocks in at 14 kilos-ish, 14 and a half maybe. The Pro 1000 clocks in at over 30 kilos. Like, that's a heavy printer, okay? Now, if your workflow involves moving your printer around from place to place, me, for example, over the, I've been known to do a lot of printing workshops, so I might have to transport the printer from A to B, the way it would make a big, big difference. But if you're the type of person who installs a printer in one place and leaves it there and it never moves, then past the point of installation, it's not really a factor. Now, build quality, they both seem really, really sturdy. So initially, I thought the difference in weight may have been a reflection in a difference in build quality, but not at all, not at all. It's a fantastically well-built printer. I mean, obviously, it doesn't print as large as the Pro 1000, which we'll get to in a second, so it doesn't require as, as, as many big mechanical components. The moving parts don't need to move as big sheets of paper through the printer, etc. So, and the movement of the print head doesn't have to be as wide. So that's all going to contribute to the size and weight, okay? So... Both printers are extremely well built, no problem. Paper loading. When I first tested the Pro 300, one thing that immediately jumped out at me was no matter how, as long as I put a sheet of paper in the actual loading tray, okay, as long as it was in there and, and seated, it always loaded, okay? It never misfed. It would always feed correctly through the printer, all right? Like, I even tried to make it misfeed. As long as you put it down actually into the, 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 the paper feed, no matter what angle you put it at, I could not make it misfeed, okay? Now, the Pro 1000, um, I've never had many misfeeds, if any at all. I don't even remember ever having a misfeed, but that's because, look, I've come through a time when printers were more difficult to load paper on. I mean, it's easy nowadays. Canon were, like, one of the first advances they made was they made it so easy to load paper. So the Pro 1000 is still a really easy printer to load the paper on and it, I don't tend to have any misfeeds so it's not really an issue there but it is amazing just how good the Pro 300 is at avoiding misfeeds even when you try to make it misfeed. It's got some fancy new laser guided um, paper feeding system apparently that you know corrects for any misalignment of the paper so but it's very impressive it is really really impressive. But as I mentioned, they're both really easy to load, okay? No issues, no misfeeds. After you load the paper, we may as well talk about paper size. The Pro 300 prints up to A3+, which is 13 by 19 inches, okay? The Pro 1000 prints up to A2, which is 
17 by 25 is the, the largest sheet size it can print. Okay, now the Pro 1000 also has a banner functionality, so you can extend that to very, very wide panoramas. All right, so the size difference in how large you can print is obviously a big difference between the two printers because if you need larger prints than A3 or A3 Plus, if you need larger than 13 by 19, then obviously that's a, a point in favor of the Pro 1000 for you. If you don't need larger than 13 by 19 ever, then it's a bit of a no-brainer really. The Pro 300 is more of an appropriate printer, okay, from a size point of view. Now, print quality. The, I've said it many times, the Pro 1000 is my favorite printer to use. Um, my ideal printer <laughs> would be a blend of the Pro 1000 and the Pro 300, and I'll tell you why. Both of them have phenomenal print quality, okay? The, like the detail, the smoothness, color transition, accuracy, when I tested them, no issues whatsoever. All right, really, really high quality prints. Absolutely top quality prints, okay? They're at the top of their game. They're at the top of the industry. There's no doubt about it, okay? Um, now, if you look at specs, I did say we'd mention a few specs. If you look at specs, Canon says the Pro 300 can print up to like 2400 by 4800. And the Pro 1000 can print up to 1200 by 2400. That's dots of ink per inch. You won't see any difference. It's like, it's invisible. There is no difference. In the real world, that makes absolutely no difference. Okay? Um, they both have phenomenal print quality. Color image wise, I noticed them to be pretty much identical in terms of quality and color accuracy, etc. And when I did tests on both, and still even on the Pro 1000, most prints I've ever done have always been on various Permajet papers, be they the digital photo range, the um, fiber-based Beretta papers, or the fine art papers. And, um, you know, it's the same with both printers. The color images were just absolutely phenomenal and amazing quality. Where I did see a slight difference is when it comes to the matte black prints. If you're making a lot of matte black and white prints, I have to give a slight edge to the Pro 300. The Pro 300 is, without a doubt, the best printer on the market printing matte black and white prints. Okay? Now, is there like a huge difference if I didn't see that printer? Would you be unhappy with the matte black and whites from the Pro 1000? Not at all. Not at all. They're both stunning. Okay? Um, and the difference between the two of them you know, I mean, you can get closer by, by compensating in, in a slight bit of extra raising the black point in your editing, maybe, if you're printing on the Pro 1000, but I've never, I've never really had to do it. I'm just trying to be very real world here, okay? And give real world scenarios that where it actually doesn't, doesn't make a difference. But if it is important to you to have the absolute best matte black and white prints over anything else, then I would say Pro 300. But if you need a two, are you going to be disappointed with the matte black and white prints then on the Pro 1000? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And like I said, it's only when you put them side by side you can see the slight difference between them. But it is slight. I mean, the Pro 1000 is still a phenomenal printer. But it's important to mention, because that might be the most important thing in the world to you, the matte black and white prints. Okay? And every little edge might be important. Depends again, like I said, on your use case scenario. Now, print speed. They're both fast printers. Um, I consistently got about five minutes for an edge-to-edge -edge full bleed borderless A4 print on the Pro 300. I know Canon has spec the Pro 1000 at printing, I think about five or six minutes or something for, for a high quality A2 um, print. But look, at the end of the day, it depends how you print. Print speed is very variable dependent, okay? For me, I tend to always print from very high res, very large files, okay? Um, I don't interpolate them down to 300 ppi, that's a whole other conversation, but I am sending very large files to the printer. And it's important to remember that when you read your printer specs and it says interface is, is high speed USB, that's USB 2, okay? So that's a USB that came out like 23 years ago. Okay, so it's important to remember that's still only 480 megabits per second. And sometimes I'm guilty of send, sending multiple gigabyte uh, files to the printer. So that, that will add a little bit, okay? So um, you might get print speeds exactly like it says in Canon specs. Yours might take slightly longer. It really depends on, on what you're printing. 
it's very variable specific, okay? When the Pro 300 came out, it did have a fancy new Barita paper feature and also some very intelligent functions where you could raise the, the print head height. But with an update to the firmware that came out in 2019 for the Pro 1000, that has all the same functionality now. The only reason I mention that is because it is an important piece of information to know now and it's not a difference between the two printers, but if you look at any old information or even previous videos I've done, you may see mention that there was a difference between the two, but that's not there anymore. The same thing for borderless printing. Canon has always restricted the ability to print borderless on fine art papers to preserve quality at the edges and to stop ink smearing on the backs and things like this. But since the Pro 300, they've given the ability to expand right to the edge on the fine art papers. They still don't recommend it, but at least you can do it, okay? From looking at the manual of the Pro 1000, even though I have a Pro 1000, from looking at the manual updated in 2019, that has the same functionality also, okay? But that's not something that's important to me. Um, I almost never print borderless. To me, I always, especially, I print commercial images, I print um, fine art images, when I'm printing editions or whatever, I generally speaking, 90% of the time, print with a border. I just think on most print sizes, it looks really slick. It looks really clean and it protects the edge of the print. So I almost never print borderless. The only time I print borderless, um, especially on fine art paper, was when I'm printing very large prints from a roll paper on the, f the, the larger format printer that I have, okay? Because those at 24 by 36 inches, I'll flush mount them because they're big enough to, to look good when they're flush mounted. Um, but other than that, every other print size I do, a 10 by 15, something up to A2 size, whatever, I will always leave a border. I think it looks really, really good. When borderless printing came out first on home photo printers, it was like a big deal. We could get prints that looked like a full page in a magazine. And that was like a novelty. But I don't think it's the thing anymore. And I know there are a lot of people who look for it, and I'm only just giving my, my opinion. So for my use case scenario, it's not a big deal. But for you, it might be very important. And if it is, then at least it's important to know the, that both printers can do that for you. But the big restriction was always just on the fine art ranges of papers. So if you select a heavyweight fine art media type, for example, historically Canon would have always prevented you from printing edge to edge, borderless full bleed. The Pro 1000 uses 12 inks, including the Chroma Optimizer. The Pro 300 uses 10, including the Chroma Optimizer, okay? Like I said though, I've seen no difference in quality between the two. But the reason I mention the ink cartridges and how many inks it uses, etc., is because when you're replacing inks as time goes by, buying 10 versus 12, you see where I'm going, okay? Also, another difference is the Pro 1000 uses 80 milliliter ink tanks, ink cartridges, sorry, whereas the Pro 300 uses like 14, 14 and a half milliliter ink cartridges. They're gonna run out more often. That might not be a big deal to you if you're an occasional printer, etc. but it's a big deal to me. I much prefer if I have to change my ink cartridges less regularly because it's less time wasted, especially if I'm on le doing large batch jobs, printing large amounts of prints, okay? Uh, if I'm printing a lecture, I could end up reprinting the whole lecture, for example. So that could be a lot of prints and I don't want to be changing ink cartridges, you know, a couple of times during that job. The last thing to bear in mind about changing ink cartridges more often is the fact that there's always going to be some wastage. I can't say for sure there's a difference in economics and how that works out with regards to would you waste more ink because you change ink cartridges more often on the Pro 300 versus the Pro 1000? I don't know. But it would just seem to me like there's always going to be something left in the cartridge when you throw it out, so I don't know. But it's just important to bear in mind, I think. Okay? Now, the last thing I wanna mention between the two of them is if you're an occasional printer and you don't print that often versus a person who prints every day or every two days, then I think that's an important factor with these two printers as well. The Pro 1000 is a printer that needs to be printed on regularly. You need to print on it every day or every couple of days or whatever, you know? What you don't do is, and this has happened to me many times, is if you, if you leave it sitting for a long period of time, a few weeks, for example, it'll end up using pretty much all of the ink you have, cleaning everything out, 
and you'll very quickly fill your maintenance tank as well. So you're replacing the ink and replacing the maintenance tank. Whereas when it's used very regularly, every couple of days, it's far more economical, okay? The Pro 300, and I didn't have one for long enough to be able to have that issue, but from feedback that I've received from on the, the launch information and from people who've got the printer, they've said it's not as big an issue with that printer, okay? So maybe if you're an occasional printer, the Pro 300 is definitely probably more useful for you. So to summarize, the big differences between the printers are the size and weight, okay? The Pro 300 is smaller and lighter, the Pro 1000 is bigger. The print size, Pro 1000 prints up to A2, the Pro 300 only prints up to 13 by 19, okay? And in terms of image quality, they're both like very, very close. The Pro 300 has a tiny edge on matte blacks, okay? They're the big, big differences for me, okay? In terms of actual printing and use case. So who, who is each printer for? If you need large prints, you need the Pro 1000. It's that simple. If you need to print bigger than 13 by 19, you need the Pro 1000. If you don't, and if you never print larger than 13 by 19, then you definitely don't need the Pro 1000 because the Pro 300 will give you absolutely everything else, unless changing in cartridges regular, regularly is a big issue for you. Then you might want to look at the Pro 1000. But then again, bear in mind, it's a bigger printer and a heavier printer. Okay, so my use cases are basically around printing commercial images and printing fine art images for display, okay? Um, that might not be you. There are plenty of people who use printers for completely different things. You might be making reproductions of, you could be an artist making reproductions and, and prints to sell of your, of your artworks. Either printer can do that fantastically well for you. Either of them, for sure, all right? But if you need them bigger than 13 by 19, then it's the Pro 1000. If you don't, then absolutely, the Pro 300, you're not losing anything if you never print bigger. All right? Print quality-wise. Other than that, there are people who are, you know, use them, and I get a lot of questions about, for example, can you use them for keyring inserts, you know? What's the story with making prints? What's the best printer if you're the kind of person who makes keyring inserts or little enclosed, you know, displays for fridge magnets and things like this? Then either of them will do that, but you don't need A2, okay? That to me sounds like the, the kind of situation where, um, yeah, you get no benefit from having the larger printer. And especially if you're not printing on it every day, which is one of the things that are every few days or very regularly, um, as I mentioned, the Pro 1000 kind of likes. Um, and especially with Permajet's new double-sided papers, if you can line things up properly in the way you edit the, um, in the way you, you set the images up for print, back and forward, either of the two of them will handle the double-sided papers really well as well, nice and clean. Um, no issues, so you know both of them will handle that. Whether you're printing on separate sheets and putting them back to back, or if you're printing on double-sided, um, double-sided media, so that you can put them into keyring inserts or fridge magnet inserts, either of them will do. So look, that's my experience of using both printers um, from real-world point of view, and with regards to a lot of questions and and queries I get from from people, whether it's by email, messages, workshops, whatever. Um, I hope that information is useful, uh, but at the end of the day, like I mentioned, the only person who can decide which of the printers is best for you is you. But the one thing I can say is, whichever one fits your needs best, they're both fantastic printers. They're, you know, like I said, my ideal, ideal printer would be a, a merger of both. The Pro 1000 with a slight edge on the matte blacks of the Pro 300, that would be the perfect printer, but they're both amazing printers, whichever one fits your needs best, you'll be delighted. So, enjoy.